we were going to put something together to help our community feel validated and feel inspired and to be in a safe space where we can plan our weddings, our weddings matter, and that our love and commitment to each other is equal, normal, and to be celebrated. Welcome to The Wedding Biz with Andy Kushner, the show about the global wedding business and your backstage pass to the happily ever after world of professional dream makers. I gave you my heart on a silver platter cause you made my dreams come true. It won't crack, baby. Hi, it's Andy, host of The Wedding Biz, and I am so excited to bring you a conversation with Kirsten and Maria, who founded Equally Wed, which is really the ultimate guide to planning an LGBTQ plus, as they say, wedding. It, it, there's just an incredible amount of support for both couples and vendors. And Kirsten and Maria are also a same-sex couple who tell a tremendous story about how and why they started Equally Wed and all that they went through. And you will find, like I did, they are not only innovators, they are pioneers. And what they had to face along the way really also puts them in the role of activists. And I found them to be so passionate and courageous. And I also want to mention, speaking of courageous, if you are or know anyone who is a parent struggling with how to best support a child who is in the LGBTQ community, then you might want to check out a conversation I had with another podcast that I have called Extraordinary Ordinary People. And we'll put this in the show notes. I sat down with someone named Soyla Fajardo on May 10th, 2017, who has a transgender daughter. And her story is so touching. It is a knockout. It is amazing. I highly recommend Again, if you or you know a parent who has a child or even just in the family, friends, uh, you got to check this out. And, and again, we'll have a link in the show notes. And coming back to Kirsten and Maria of Equally Wed, I want to say, too, that theirs is not just an entrepreneurial story. It is really touching. It's educational and most of all, inspiring. So I'm so proud to introduce you to Kirsten and Maria. Kirsten and Maria, we met during the Engage Luxury Wedding Business Summit here at the Nizuk Resort and Spa in Cancun, and you both co-founded Equally Wed, the ultimate guide to planning your LGBTQ plus wedding. And Kirsten, you are the editor-in-chief of Equally Wed, the online magazine, equallywed.com. You've served as editor for several newspapers and magazine and written thousands of articles and provided writing, editing, consulting, social media, and communication services to hundreds of clients. You also authored the book Equally Wed, which I have right in front of me. It looks wonderful. I'm going to definitely read that. Um, which is a wedding planning book for LGBTQ uh, couples. And Maria, you are co-founder and creative director, and you manage the development and design and marketing. You have a background in graphic and web design and development. And I'd like to go back just a little bit in time first. I'll I'll start with you, Kirsten. Um, Can you tell me something about where you grew up? First of all, where are you from? Sure. I, I grew up in Athens, Georgia. Yeah, Athens, Georgia. Not a very progressive town for this kind of topic. Okay, so actually, strangely, Athens and Atlanta, Georgia yeah. are the two most progressive towns in Georgia. Oh. And before we had marriage equality nationwide, Clark County, where Athens, Georgia is based out of, is uh-huh. only three counties in the entire state where we can do second parent adoption for same sex couples. Wow. That's great. It was. So, so your background that led to, you know, what you're doing today. Did you do this in, in school or, or how did you get to be interested in, in this kind of uh, writing and, and all that you've done? I always wanted to be a writer. Even when I was six years old, I was writing little stories. That was my dream. And I wanted to write books. I wanted to be an editor at a magazine, Cosmopolitan specifically, when I was yeah. in high school. Uh, it was something that I really wanted to do. I was very passionate about it. And I'm also a passionate listener. I love to hear people's stories. I like to dig deep and see where they come from. It's, it's just something that's exciting to me. And it has evolved into wanting to help people tell their own stories. So what did you do after school? Like, what was your first job? My first job was an editor at an art magazine. Uh-huh. 
a national art magazine called Art and Antiques. They're now based out of New York, but at the time they're based in Atlanta. So that was really wonderful to do. I think that's really where I got my sea legs. I just had some amazing mentors above me in terms of editorial team and I just felt right at home. So eventually it sounds like you kind of broke out on your own as a consultant. Is that right? Yes. So I was working in magazine editing for about seven years and then on the side, freelancing, consulting, et cetera, for any clients that needed my services. Uh And I was a magazine editor for about three years. Uh And then I stopped working at magazines for about two years and did a ton of freelance work and had my um, my own communications firm working side by side with Maria for her clients because she's, you know, graphic design and web development. So I would provide content services for her clients. But then I also did a lot of work for custom publications, Steinway and Sons Piano, Rolls Royce has their own publication for owners to uh, they get the owner's club desk diary uh-huh. once a year. So I did a lot of that content and then helping brands start with, you know, helping them figure out their branding. Mm-hmm. And eventually in 2007, their social media strategies and all of that. And then I got offered a job getting back into the full-time office work. And I was the life and food editor of a local newspaper in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, okay. And I was there uh, while we founded Equally Wed. Okay. And I definitely want to come back to that in a minute. And what about you, Maria? So what was your like upbringing like? I mean, what, what were your passions and interests back then when you were growing up? Yeah, so I grew up in Orlando, Florida for 18 years, my whole life in the same house. Um, and then I went to Gainesville, Florida to go to the University of Florida. I went there for one year. Did you? Oh, Good. but before it became the uh, a, a, a really good school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it was fantastic. I enjoyed it. I was there for four years and then immediately 2001 moved up to Atlanta and have been there ever since. What I was did you always... move there for, though? Why did you move to Atlanta? To, Gain- to Atlanta? Uh-huh. Um, it, just better opportunities for uh-huh. in the design world. I didn't really necessarily want to go back to Orlando. My fam- a lot of my family is in Orlando, but oh, um, as far as getting a, a graphic design job and starting my career, Atlanta was going to be a better option. And that's what you graduated in. College? I did. Yes. Is that what you studied? Yeah, I have a bachelor's in fine arts with a specialization in graphic design. So, what was the first job that you got? Oh, uh, I went and worked. Um, it was mostly a web development firm. We were uh-huh. kind of a branding and web development firm, and I came in to really support the design side of it. Yeah. But it was a very small company. I worked there for just four years and then built up my freelance space during that time and then pulled off on my own immediately after that and have been doing it ever since until we formed Equally Wed. So what kind of companies were you working with and uh, and services when you formed your own firm? Oh gosh, everything. A lot of, uh, you know, real estate agents, um, Uh brokerages, realty brokerages, smaller companies within Atlanta, you know, business to business, a recruiting and staffing firm, just a, you know, a, a wide variety of different companies. Nothing huge, but yeah. enough where I can mix it up and do logo marketing, you know, websites. And then I started to get into web development and really try to strengthen myself on that and then continue to progress with, you know, the ever changing world yeah. of web development apps and everything. Yeah, which just never stops. It does not. <laughs> I don't yes. know how you keep up with that kind <laughs> of stuff. Know. My God. So Kirsten, you were talking about when you were freelancing that you were doing some work with Maria. Is that how you both met? No, no, no. Uh, we were already together at that point when I was starting to support her work uh, with her clients. Oh, okay. We we got uh, we we met in two thousand three, and fell in love in two thousand four. Yeah, and it was two thousand and five when I left a magazine job. And started working out of um, a home office okay. and providing services for Maria's clients. Oh, I see. Were you living together at the time? Yes. We were, yes. Yeah. Yeah. This we did the uh, classic lesbian in a U-Haul thing. It wasn't that, it wasn't that fast. <laughs> yeah. We, we started six, eight months. We started dating in February. I moved in in November. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. So in terms of when you both started to come up with this idea for Equally Wed, can you tell me something about that process? Like, how did that, how did that idea come about? Why did it come about? How did you start to implement it? Sure. Do you want me to take that? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So Maria and I started dating in 2004 and... I had told her that I wanted to get engaged by the time I was 30. <laughs> okay. And a little I bit of pressure? I don't... <laughs> right, yeah. I, <laughs> how I don't, old were you I at the time? It. Wait, how old were you when you said we that? We got though? together sure. when I was 25. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Not, not too so bad. Not pressure. Yeah. Okay. All right, so cool. 
Maria flew us to New York for my 30th birthday. Yeah. And, uh, and the day before uh-huh. uh, I turned 30, she proposed in Central Park, the Chess and Checkers building. Aww. And I had written for magazines and newspapers. I'd been on staff. But somehow I had missed something huge. As a feminine bride-to-be, when we got back to Atlanta, uh-huh. I was so excited to go ahead and get started planning. I went to Barnes & Noble. I went online. And I didn't see us anywhere. Oh. And I was like, this is 2008. Where are the same-sex couples that yeah. are not celebrities? Yeah. And we, we, were, we weren't there. We weren't represented. And when I went online, there was hardly anything about same-sex weddings. And the little bit that I did find didn't really speak to us. It, it really w- didn't have a modern treatment. At the time, we were 30 yeah. and, uh, and 29. Maria's the young one. And, uh, uh, but we just... We, it was just surprising. And honestly, I'm a Pisces. I'm emotional. It was actually a little heartbreaking for me. And I just, I had never, ever, ever been ashamed of being a lesbian. Mm-hmm. I never thought that we should be treated any differently. I had not accepted it and I didn't expect it. And so after I got sad, I got mad. Yeah. And we really didn't want anyone else to feel this way when they went out to plan their own weddings. I'm a writer editor. Maria's a graphic designer, web mm. developer, and we decided that we were going to put something together to help our community feel validated and feel inspired, and to be in a safe space where uh, we can we can plan our weddings, our weddings matter, and that our love and commitment to each other is equal, normal, right, and and uh, and to be celebrated. Yeah. So, I mean, I love the story that you're telling. There's another element here. So you both decide you're going to take this on. You're taking on an enormous task. I mean, it's almost like fearless or, or did you like, how did it go for you emotionally as well as just strategically? Right. Well, I've always been a little instilled with um, confidence, less fear. less fear. I'm a risk taker. My philosophy is why not? Mm. And so, you know, go ahead and do it. Ask questions later. Yeah. And it wasn't until later after we launched, the New York Times came and did a story for us on us and sat down in our living room and said, what were you thinking, lesbians out of Atlanta, Georgia, thinking you could launch a national wedding magazine for same-sex couples? Yeah. I said, well, why wouldn't we? And I don't mean to sound any way... uh, cocky about it, but I never thought we couldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was his story. And we, we had a, you know, a a full page feature about us in the New York Times because of it, but it, I never thought we couldn't do it. Well, clearly both of you, I mean, you both are telling me in your stories that, you know, you had both worked for other people or companies, then you went off on your own. So obviously you both have a real entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, Maria, I I caught that, that you proposed at the last minute, like the day before she turned 30. And there is that it was a leap year. So it was February (laughs) 29th, (laughs) the day before. I even got an extra day in there before she turned 30. So it worked well. So crazy. So, (laughs) um, but, but again, clearly you both have an entrepreneurial spirit. I meant to take this on together. I would also think, my God, how bonding that is too, right? Absolutely. It was. It was exciting. We had a lot of moments where we just were going to do the best we could. And then, you know, if you build it and they come, then keep on doing it. Yeah. And and we did. And, you know, we started getting traffic. People were coming to the site. We had the, what are the next steps? How do we want to continue to grow this? And then we had just excitement. And pa- we loved it. We yeah. loved, and then we were getting these stories and these these pictures and these images and crying. And we still do every day as we feature new real weddings and and see just the genuine love. How could you not want to do that? I mean, the wedding world is beautiful as it is. And then you're able to support, in a sense, sometimes these underdogs mm-hmm. that have stories where their families are not coming to the weddings yeah. or struggled with vendors or whatever. And then we're giving them a face. It was, it was wonderful. And it's just been built ever since then. Yeah. It's incredibly great thing. rewarding and bonding. I like, you know, that you said that Andy, because I have such mad respect for what Maria does and what she can bring. She's mm-hmm. so creative and, and to just bring something alive together in this capacity. It's, it's just been incredibly rewarding uh, to do it together and see it validated out in the world and know that know that we're enriching our own lives while we get to do something that we love. Yeah. And I would say too, I mean, it's, it's really a form of activism, you know, back then, right? Absolutely. As well as innovation. I mean, you all innovated, you know, to be able to come up with that idea 
and to make it work. You know, I'm, I'm trying to, I can't imagine what you all had to go through. Um, first of all, just business structure wise, I mean, to, to put this thing together, how, how did you even figure out what to do? Right. You know, well, having the magazine background helped a lot every month at the national magazine that I worked at with Art and Antiques. And then I went to a regional magazine in Atlanta and being in charge of the editorial programming that we would be having every month Mm -hmm. and deciding what features we would be doing and, you know, what front of the book pieces and what service pieces, et cetera, you know, how to interview people and, and then how to find out what your readers need and Mm. and follow the insights and the traffic to be Mm -hmm. able to continue to interact with your community and, and really believe in delivering the best information to them with a uh, you know high level of journalistic integrity as well. Yeah, but also so in 2009 when you're when you founded this you're starting to put together you were still from what I understand you were still facing a lot of discrimination mm-hmm. and very unique challenges right that come with that with right. this kind of a business. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. I think you I mean you probably can talk about it well because you immediately faced it in your own experience with like going into the bridal, the dress shops Mm -hmm. um, and having people not sure how to handle that situation. Right. Absolutely. Well, you know, one of the things is when you are part of the LGBTQ community and you're getting married, you have to come out every single time and you don't know. That's interesting. You don't know. You, you know, I was going to try on my wedding gowns and, uh, and they're like, Oh, Tell me what your husband does. Oh, wow. Tell me about your boyfriend. Yeah. How did he propose? Well, and then I said, I'm marrying a woman. And then their face goes, oh. And you uh, don't know what they're thinking. There's that huh. pause. And it can be very uncomfortable. And then sometimes they're incredibly happy for you. Sometimes they say, is that even legal? Which... What? Seriously? Oh, oh, all the time. Mm -hmm. We even got that from some friends and family. When Equally Wed launched, only six states in the United States of America had marriage equality. And Georgia was not one of those. No surprise. Yeah. We knew that we weren't going to probably get marriage equality in Georgia until we had it in the national level. Mm -hmm. So when we were planning our wedding in Atlanta, Georgia, people would say to us, well-meaning people who loved us dearly, are you going to California to get married? Because at that time, California had issued marriage equality, not for long, they took it back. But we we were like, no, we're going to get married here with our friends and family. We're going to have our wedding here. And it was just the, the constant question of, well, if, you're, if your wedding's not legally recognized, why do it? And we had to... F- field a lot of questions about that. You know, this is incredible. It's like, you know, for me, I guess being heterosexual, it never even would occur to me what you're having to deal with, you know, in the, in, in this community, in that sense. Mm-hmm. It, it, you know, this is just in, incredible to me that you had to face this at every turn. Mm-hmm. And even more so because you're, you're putting together this kind of a, of a publication online, you know, company. Right. Mm-hmm. Wow. We could tell you so many stories about those days. It was it was incredible. And and what was so rewarding when we launched Equally Wet is hearing from couples around the country who had experienced that and sometimes much worse. Mm-hmm. We were very lucky oh, to have supportive families. I can't families. imagine the stories you've gotten. It's yeah. But you're saying your families were supportive of this? They were, yeah. yeah. They are still and and uh yeah. So we we were lucky to both be raised in in families where they uh, embraced us no matter who we fell in love with. Yeah. Well, and so what basically is your next step? I, w- I want to think for a minute. You, you launched in 2010, you say, mm-hmm. right? Yes. And from what I understand, it was only a handful of states, right? Correct. Probably like, I don't know, four, five, six states that were legal. There was six. Yes. And then uh, uh, the next year, right? It was 2011. Well, then Prop 8 happened in California. So then that was taken back. So you, said, you mentioned the activism. Mm-hmm. We were very much a wedding resource with all the wonderful things that the weddings provide in regards to you know real weddings and planning articles and uh, DIY inspiration, galleries, all that great stuff. But a very large portion of our site too was news and updates mm. because we still had so much we had to cover sure. in that regard as well. So, and and a lot of people that aren't planning weddings or aren't engaged yet were com- are still, but we're coming to Equally Wed. At yeah, the you're, point you're a source to get the of news information. information. Yeah, yeah, too. You're a so, we, you know, those following years, we had a lot of states, boom, boom, which was wonderful because then it just opened the doors even more for those couples that felt like they wanted it to be legal in their state before they did plan a yeah. wedding. 
And so we did have a lot more states that followed after that. And then 2000, and, I'm going to get the date wrong, but when it passed for us, 2011. June, June 26, 2015, 2015 is when we got federal marriage equality. Marriage equality. So then that obviously was a huge, very big in general as you know, an LGBTQ couple, but also for the business as well. Absolutely. A lot of champagne was consumed. We did. <laughs> and, and along the way, each state that passed marriage equality, we, we covered it and we covered the fight along the way. And we do and did consider ourselves activists in uh, the Freedom to Marry movement. In fact, we worked with Freedom to Marry, uh, you know, on social strategy and et cetera. Um, that was a very exciting to us. But one of the things that we believed strongly is visibility for real weddings of LGBTQ couples to showcase that, you know, our weddings really are just like everyone else's. Yeah, right. I mean, there are nuances and that that is one of the reasons why Equally Wed exists. We feel like we had, you know, just a small part in the the work for marriage equality because when our LGBTQ couples were getting married, we featured some of the the most incredible weddings over the last seven years. Yeah. And those couples got to share that that feature, you know, on Facebook, on email, and their families and other people's families were seeing their their weddings validated, but also seeing just how weddings are about two people coming together and mm. committing their lives to one another in a celebratory fashion that it it has yeah, nothing to period. do with gender. Right. Yeah. It's been great. And one thing I also want to say about the marriage equality movement is we I firmly believe we would not have won the right to marry legally in the United States if it hadn't been for our allies, our heterosexual cisgender allies who believe strongly that love is love, no matter who we are, or how we were born. Yeah. And people that were out there in the trenches were not just people who, who are in the LGBTQ community. It's allies like you mm. uh, that stand stood alongside us. And it's it just, it's been an incredible ride. And I'm, I'm so proud that we are here now. Yeah. I, I'll never, never understand why anyone cares about what anyone else does with their lives. But so what? I, right. I'll never get that. But you mentioned, um, and, and by the way, I want to say too, I mean, I'm really just knocked out by this. I'm, I, I can't, what you both have done. I mean, Wow. Yeah, yeah, for the community. That's and so, thank you yes. so much. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, just, I feel honored to be, you know, getting this story. Ugh. So you mentioned, Kirsten, you mentioned some some nuances that do exist in the LGBTQ community related to weddings. Can you both say something about that? Like, what are some of those nuances? Sure. Well, one of the things is that not all traditions, traditions, wedding traditions, were built around society structure of gender and. Mm. You know, gender is a is a societal construct. It's not necessarily we. You know, we tell boys you're going to be this way growing up. You know, don't cry. You know, it's the hyper masculinity that's kind of being really uh, critiqued and and broken down now in this in this uh, yeah this day and age right this now. day and age. Currently, Thank you. Yeah. Yes, uh, but for the you know for the longest time, it's like you know boys are taught you will grow up and you will take care of your woman, yeah. and uh, and the women are brought up or have been brought up, you know, you will grow up and you will, you will look for a husband who can provide for you and your family. And mm. that's not, that's not everybody's story. Thank goodness it's changing for heterosexual couples too. But when you have, you know, gay and lesbian or queer couples planning their lives together and they are not falling into these roles that society has placed mm. based on your gender or gender expression, then some traditions may not work for you in terms of like, is somebody going to wait at the altar with the officiant? Is somebody going to walk down the aisle? Will there be bouquets or won't there be bouquets? Ah, uh, I see. Uh, right. Who will you dance with? Hmm. You know, in terms of a parent, how will you choose your last names? Where are you going to honeymoon are you going to go to a place where you can be arrested for holding hands? Oh, jeez. You know, we had to really think about our um, our honeymoon. Where can we not be beaten? Oh, my God. Uh, just for dining in a place where we might want to look at each other romantically because we just got hit. Yeah. That's a big deal. So we, um, you know, I, I go over that in my book, but also we write about safe places to enjoy yourself on your honeymoon on equallywet.com. It's 
it's something that our heterosexual friend, our heterosexual friends, are uh, lucky and privileged to not have to worry about. Yes, but it's something that we have to be concerned and, with. And, and again, you know, I'm, I'm almost embarrassed. I know I don't need to be, but I wouldn't even be aware that you're dealing with the those kinds of issues. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think also bringing it out to the public, making people aware, is going to help perhaps venues and various quote unquote vendors to kind of readjust how they present, you know, and 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 all that. I, that's interesting too. Right. right. And, and what about that? So Maria, like with. Um, you know, getting the resources, the vendors, the uh, to to want to advertise and and to uh, promote their services and their products. I imagine that 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 even though you know they want to get more audience, still there had to be these prejudices or maybe concerns that they're going to be viewed in some way by you know. How, right. Did you run into a lot of that when you were you know? communicating with potential, again, advertisers and people to get involved? I think so. We, you know, I think it's a little bit of one reaching out, they just do not engage back at all if they're not interested. Hmm. I haven't run into too many that have said, no, thank you. We don't want to be in front of your audience at all. But in the early days, yeah. I imagine. Uh, did, did we discuss, I mean... I'm trying to think of a specific, probably in some smaller cities we did. Yeah. I think if we were just looking for general vendors for our directory and whatnot, they were just, you know, just, just wouldn't respond. Wouldn't respond right. most yeah. of the time. Yeah. Polite silence. Yeah. So, but I think, you know, we have a lot with our vendors now are interested in reaching the community, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we're also wanting them to understand that, you know, just being in front of our community att attracts these potential couples planning their wedding for their services or, yep. or whatever their needs are, but also they're showcasing to our heterose heterosexual couples that have friends and family that are gay, that this vendor supports their friends and family. Yeah. And for me, I would believe that it would just strengthen what they are as a company, whatever their services are as a vendor. Like we've said, our allies are the biggest change makers. And if these vendors are saying I am fine with having a same sex couple here on my website. Yeah. It's, it's as a couple, as an LGBTQ couple, we're going to see that and it's going to warm our heart and go, yes, I want to, let's consider them. We're considering them as a florist. Great. Um, and I believe for our allies, if you have a sister or a brother that's gay, yeah. you're not planning a same sex wedding, but you see that and you go, well, thank, thank you for that. Yeah, because right. I know what they feel. So it's just been great to, uh, to see how vendors want to take that in and understand it has nothing to do with a dollar amount or how much business they may even get, but that they're supporting us in every way they can. Well, and I understand too. I mean, obviously marriages in the LGBTQ community have really grown tremendously, mm -hmm. right? And I imagine it's even the tip of the iceberg. You know, are there still any attitudes that, y that you feel still need to be addressed, need to be changed, any at all? Yes, yes. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a growing market. And with growth become, comes education and the need for it. And then resistance, because I understand, and Maria and I have been t talking about this, that people have their personal views. And I think every personal view deserves... Just space to, just to space. be, to exist. Yeah. Exactly. But also... How many years has there only been heterosexual marriage and ceremonies and traditions? And we have to make space for that, too, for people who only understand it in one way and were raised with that. And so when we come with our educational guides and uh, we have a certification program to help vendors learn how to be more equality minded. That's great. Thank how do you, you get, how do you find that by the way? Um, you can just go to equallywed.com. We've been doing it one-on-one -on -one, uh -huh. uh, with businesses. And then in January, we're rolling out an online course so that vendors and venues can go in and take the course and learn pretty much everything that they would like to know how to turn what's in their heart mm -hmm. out into the world, into their marketing, their language, how they welcome people when they come into their office or on the phone to make sure that they are using the most inclusive language to illustrate what principles they have in their own business. Mm. Well, this episode will be released after that. So we'll let's be sure to get the link okay. and, and we're going to put all of this in the show notes. Oh, I wonderful. think that's going to be really okay, helpful great. to the audience yeah. here. 
And also, you know, I believe that recently other major wedding publications, online services are really starting to embrace this with some extensive extensive coverage. Mm -hmm. You know, you must feel really good about that because that helps everybody, right, in the community. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. No, it's it's incredibly validating and it's not necessarily just as being involved in the wedding media, but being, a, you know, in a same-sex marriage myself, it's it's just great to see having our community feel validated. I know I keep saying that word, but validated. Kind yeah. of, I mean, we got married in Atlanta, Georgia, when it was not legally recognized. And then two years later, we flew to New York when it was legally available. And we got married uh, at the Marriage Bureau in Manhattan. And yeah. We we did not feel any less married before that, mm-hmm. but when an officer of the court said, I declare you married, and we our names were written down in a book of marriage, <laughs> yeah. we're like, yeah, we are officially recognized as a couple, and someone just said, your love matters, and it's equal under the law. It, it was incredibly mm. validating. Yes, yes. It was a sh- it was a short thing that meant the world. So we can understand how a lot of couples wanted to wait for it to be legal in their states before they did it. Yeah. And that wasn't for us. We didn't care. We wanted the wedding. And then we wanted also the legal ceremony. So we had the the wonderfulness of both. Right. And but plus it's powerful. It's powerful to have it legally recognized. And and then through the United States, amazing. Yeah, you know, obviously for you all this is far more than just a business venture. You know, so I think the fact that you both are experiencing all that we've been talking about right you know, as the founders of this and continuing it, it's wonderful. It's just really, Mm -hmm. you know, wonderful that you know, you know what it feels like, right? To go through this. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And and to experience the good too. Can you all tell me maybe just a a, a couple stories of some really favorite weddings that really moved you, you know, that you featured and that you've learned about? There are two women in Atlanta, Georgia, who got married within the last four or five years. And they are, I'm going to say, older than 60. Wow. I think that would be fair to say. And they were the first same-sex couple to get married in their church in, in Atlanta. And their photographs were more special to me than, in, than a lot of others because they had been together for decades. Yeah. And, and undercover, I imagine. Undercover, under and under scrutiny Mm. and they have a very strong faith and wanted to wait until they could get married uh, in the eyes of God Mm. in the support of their church and also in the support of their state and country. And so when they looked into each other's eyes, you know, at this altar and uh, you know, they, they have the wrinkles, they have the white oh. hair, and it's like, it's just, it, I don't know, I can't really explain it other than just the way that I felt when I, I look at their pictures and just the utter joy that they feel that it's, 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 ta- it's been a long journey for them, and mm. they finally got this moment. Oh and my God. It, it just, it, and we feel that often, mm-hmm. honestly, you know, um, another, we, we feature couples from Bora Bora to Ireland, Australia, New York, et cetera, uh, but Another couple that comes to mind is also out of Atlanta, and um, two, they're um, African-American men, and they got married in a church, too. And one of the men, his father walked him down the aisle, and he not only wore a suit, it was white with tails, but he also had a train, oh. and he also carried a bouquet. Yeah. And uh, and his dad was just beaming, walking him down the oh. aisle, and... <laughs> I don't. I remember that one. I can't remember a lot of the details, but yeah, there's little details like that where you see where like family and friends have integrated into the story yeah. in a way where you know there was some type of struggle or even an inner turmoil for them yeah. that you can tell is released in that moment. Ah, oh, so, I get it's, it. Yeah. It's a, wow. It's a thing. And that's what that was. Wow. So where do you see the industry going now? Let's say in the next five years. Yeah. What do you mm. think? Oh, that's good. Yeah, it is. Well, we want to continue to stay involved. Uh, We love how integrated same-sex weddings has become in the mainstream wedding industry, and we we love 
providing a um, a safe and inclusive space. And I say safe because we are still under so much oppression in this country. Mm. Most of us can still be, or many of us can still be evicted from housing for being gay. We can lose our jobs for being gay. We, uh, we lose. <laughs> People lose friends and family every day for coming out. Our trans brothers and sisters are being killed uh, or committing suicide because of the extreme discrimination coming at them left and right. And when people in our community can come to Equally Wed and just have their love and commitment for each other celebrated and validated and know that they're in a community where they're not the token— that they are reading about stories written by people who truly understand who've walked that walk. And we are, we are all in this together. Yeah. Yeah. And so with the mainstream wedding media, I love what they're doing and I want them to keep doing it. I want it to get stronger and stronger and, and including even more same sex weddings and weddings of color and all kinds of different diversity. But I don't think that we won't have a place in that still because we like like any other uh, oppressed group and minority group, we always still need a safe place to just kind of land mm-hmm. and feel that community of just being with each other. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. And also, Go ahead. Um, also <laughs> there, now that we have marriage equality, now we're fighting for wedding equality. And we, we founded the Wedding Equality Alliance a couple of years ago. And it's, it is part of our education, but it's also just another way for vendors and venues to come in and and not only learn how to be quality minded, but to share in the inclusiveness and to meet each other so that perhaps a, a stronger network can grow where they can recommend each other to their clients looking for people who not only see the dollar signs because gay weddings is a big business. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, it's booming, but we don't want to just work with people who want our money. We want to work with people who have our best interest in heart and who are going to go out to the polls and make sure, you know, that they are, they're voting in our interest and, uh, and that they also will take the time to make, um, make the wedding industry better for all of us. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So for anyone who wants to make some submissions, you know, whether it's, on the vendor side or whether it's, you know, a couple, um, can you talk a little bit about that? What is it that you're looking for? You know, what, what should they consider? Yeah. Kirsten can probably speak to that better with the editorial side, but we're, we want to see every shape, color, size, form of a wedding. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, the diversity within the diversity, you know, we want all of that as far as, as far as what is submitted, anything from big to small, um, and then the the processes of it, you would obviously be able to speak to that. A little right. Better. So we have a really easy submission process, equallywed.com forward slash submissions. Mm-hmm. And vendors and couples can, anyone can go in and, you know, with the permission of the couple or, you know, with the permission of the photographer, et cetera, uh, can go in and, and, and fill out the form and submit images. Uh, we're looking for a lot of details. Uh, you know, that the look that they, uh, the couple shares, uh, you know, on the dance floor, um, you know, in the vows, uh, wiping away tears, all of that. But we also, you know, we want the detail shots that are going to inspire our readers, uh, you know, when it is to uh, marriers who are uh, both feminine and want to wear, and not that all feminine people need to wear this, but, you know, with two feminine brides per se, who are wearing uh, both gowns, both are wearing gowns. And how do you get those fabrics to complement one another uh-huh. uh, and not necessarily be matching? Although we do have readers who want that as well. Yeah. But, uh, you know, our, our, our readers are nearly weds and they're looking for inspiration to yeah. plan their wedding. Mm-hmm. So what, what is it that they're going to take, you know, from, yeah. you know, whether it's um, the color palette or those flowers and, and that particular climate, or we just, you know, we spoke with a wonderful uh, vendor yesterday here at Engage who she's um, from Italy and she had um, Italians who had spent a lot of time in New York and then come back and got married in Italy, but they reconstructed New York city in their, um, in an outdoor, uh, countryside setting, (laughs) uh, 
in Italy, and it was just extraordinary and inspiring. And it shows couples, just gives them ideas about how to personalize their own wedding to who they are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what it's all about is reflect their personality. And, Absolutely. You know, as we get ready to close, is there anything else that either of you would like to say about this whole topic? I'm lucky to be, I'm lucky to be doing this with my best friend and uh, the love of my life. <laughs> Well, there you go. <laughs> on that, <laughs> yeah, on that note, ditto. Okay. No, it's great. It's 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 we we love that. It's you know we were talking about the vendor stuff. I think it's just it's our our couples are coming in and getting inspired, but we also want um, vendors and venues and anybody within the wedding industry to use us as a resource as well. I mean, mm. we're we're able to teach a lot. You know, we're, you're just reminding me where we talked to photographers, where a, a gentleman had come up and said, "I don't, I'm not, sh- I'm shooting my first t- two male." you know, wedding this year, I think it was six or eight months in, in the future. And I'm not sure how to position them. Uh, I'm not sure how I should have them stand. I don't want yeah. one to look too feminine or masculine. I'm not, what do I do here? Right. Um, and, you know, in positioning um, boutonnieres to opposite sides because huh. we have two men with suits on, huh. you know, so we are here for, you know, the quote unquote vendors or anybody within the industry yeah. to say, well, this is what we've experienced with our couples. This is what we've seen in our real weddings. And here, here's how we can help you. Here's some tips. Mm. Take them however you want, then discuss it with the couple. But, uh, but, but here's what we've seen and what we love and what might work. Right. So we just were a wonderful community in this wedding industry. And then we're just here representing this other, you know, the LGBTQ side. Right. And it's, it's, it's beautiful when it all comes together and, and melds well. Absolutely. Our communication lines are open. We get flooded with questions from vendors just wanting to know more uh, on how to work with the couples who they are anxious to, to start working with or have been working with or, or have a specific situation that might be delicate. They're not sure how to handle it. We get questions like that day and night, which is why we've decided to make our uh, training more in, in a, a uniform fashion so that we can help more people because it, it's also a service to our readers and, and to our community at large. Uh, but we're, you know, we just believe in equality and, and we're here to help in any way that we can. Great. And I know, and Maria, you mentioned, you know, in terms of submissions, the diversity within diversity, you mm-hmm. know, so I want to point out, I want to point out too, that uh, the name of the company and, and the book, you've got the plus, I mean, LGBTQ plus, so that it really opens it up to whoever, anyone, however, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I right. really want to make that point. Mm-hmm. You know, there, right. there's no limits here. Absolutely. You know, we do not just cover cisgender gays and lesbians. We have queer couples, gender queer couples, non-binary people. You know, one might be bisexual. One might identify as a queer femme. Yes. One person may be on a journey who is not identifying yet as transgender, but there is a place for you and your weddings and it's an equally wed. Mm Mm-hmm. So, so what is the the best way? I mean, equally let equally wed dot com. Anything else you want to mention in terms of the best way to learn more about about what you have to offer? And and again, we're going to have all of this in the show notes too. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, equally wed dot com is the best place to start. And then my book is available wherever books are sold. It's uh, equally wed: the ultimate guide to planning your LGBTQ plus wedding. We always want to support indie booksellers. Yeah. And uh, you can find it there or have your local bookseller order it for you, but definitely on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and all of the international uh, book sites as well. Great, wonderful. Well, I have so much enjoyed talking with both of you, Kirsten and Maria. And again, I mean, I'm just so moved by the stories and what you are doing. So I, I again, thank you for, for being on this show. Oh, thank you. Thank you wonderful. so much, Andy. It's been a pleasure to speak with you. We appreciate your interest. This has been The Wedding Biz with Andy Kushner. You can find us at theweddingbiz.com and on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Wedding Biz Show. I gave you my heart. If you want to support the show, we'd be grateful if you shared it with colleagues, friends, and family. We'd also appreciate your review wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks for listening. Cause you made